Hi there, welcome back to the inside of Junkie's head. There are still some people who don't really know how anti-cheats and bans in CSGO work. I decided to spare these people the whole googly thing and put almost all you need to know into one video. Currently there are 4 anti-cheat systems in CSGO. Matchmaking uses WAC, Autowatch, Prime Account and Trust Factor. I think I already said enough about WAC in the video called why is it so easy to cheat in video games, so let's just do a quick recap. VAC scans memory and processes for known cheats. It can also detect anomalies which are then analyzed by VAC team. If code is confirmed to be a cheat, it is added to the database. Bans are usually not given instantly but after some random time, so cheaters won't know the hack is already detected. Getting banned by VAC in CSGO takes away your ability to trade in-game items, send CSGO as gift, upload content to game hubs and also vote in CSGO workshop. I can't say that VAC and its helpers are amazing, but certainly it is not as bad as people think. What I mean by that is there are not as many cheaters in the game as people think there are. Sure, a lot of people get around VAC, I'm not denying that. But at least 50 to 60 of all cheating accusations is just people not being able to comprehend the fact that someone might be or is better than them. Especially in lower ranks. Please tell me how can someone with cheats be in Master Guardian? You really have to be disabled to achieve that. Look, I don't play matchmaking that often. I usually only play on Smurf or from time to time I accept some random invites on main so take this with a grain of salt. In last 6 months I met maybe 5 or 6 cheaters. So either I'm incredibly lucky or people are saying that the situation is a lot worse than it actually is. Overwatch was the first step towards more secure matchmaking. I mean, it's not perfect, but it still works. It implements cheat hunting sessions as an in-game feature in CSGO. Of course not everyone can be cheat hunter or as Wolf calls it, investigator. They are selected based on the number of wins, account age, hours played, skill group and also low report count. On official Steam support site about Overwatch, there's a mention of things like you need 250 plus wins or you need to be at least gold number 1. That's what usual people say when talking about becoming an investigator. Me, personally, I would not believe them. If you want to become one, just play the game like you would anyway and I guess be nice? At least try to be nice. These replays are 8 rounds or roughly 10 minutes long and you can review this demo more than once. You have 4 categories with each having 2 verdicts, which are insufficient evidence or evident beyond a reasonable doubt. Those four categories are aim, vision or other external assistance and griefing. If majority of players vote for each option, actions will be taken and the suspect is either banned or the case is thrown out. Based on your judgement you are also getting an overwatch score and XP to your private rank. Both depends on whether or not you are right, i.e. agreed with the majority. Keep in mind that decision of investigators with high overwatch score carries more weight so try to be as accurate as you can. Also, don't forget the fact that there might be cases of innocent people on purpose just to test you if your judgement is right. To become a suspect you have to be reported repeatedly in short period of time, number of your reports has to stand out or you build up many reports over time. So when some cheater tells you that they won't get caught by Overwatch because they use the tactic of only playing one game a day, they pretty much have no idea what they are talking about. Last thing about Overwatch is my opinion of excluding chat and voice chat. Especially when you have a case of someone griefing, you can't really tell only by the replay, since a lot of griefing in this game is done by ghosting. It would be nice to see and hear those things to improve your judgement. Prime accounts are with us since April 2016. It basically means that you connect your mobile phone number with your CSGO account. To do this you have to be at least level 21 private rank or higher, or if you are already past that you have to have a service medal. For Valve and CSGO developers, players who are willing to connect their phone number with their CSGO account are more trustworthy. You can only use one phone number for one Prime account and if you are banned this phone number is blocked for a certain time. This means more effort for cheaters to join Prime matchmaking, but sadly it doesn't work as smoothly as expected. Cheaters can just buy accounts with Prime already on them, so yeah, still not 100% cheater proof. One last thing, you can have your phone number linked to multiple Steam accounts, but only one Prime account. If any of those accounts are banned, your phone number will be blocked and you can also receive VAC ban on every single account linked with that number. Trust Factor is the newest addition to things which improve CSGO matchmaking. It was launched in November 2017. 
It can be understood as behavior score or indicator and every player is assigned with one. Based on this you will be matched with players with similar trust factor. Of course this takes some time since it is in my opinion something like ELO. You can't really view your trust factor but you can somewhat see if it's bad or not based on the players in your game. So if you are toxic, cheating or griefing, you will be matched with players like you. Wolf didn't say specifically what can change your trust factor, but they at least said that to improve it you have to be a positive member of CSGO and Steam community. This means that it can depend on prime account, behavior and bans in Steam community, trade bans, age of the account, number of cooldowns, kicks, team kills, reports for cheating or griefing and also VAC and game bans. It is speculated that it also depends on your attitude towards other players, but I don't think Wall has that much time to review each player individually. Trust factor is always on. The only thing you choose in matchmaking right now is whether or not you want to play with Prime. And I strongly advise you to use it. When in a lobby with people, the lowest trust factor of individual in that specific party is said as lobby trust factor? I don't really know how to name it to be honest. This means for example that playing with cheating boosters is not worth it anymore. Actually it was never worth it but whatever. I know that trust factor and prime aren't real anti-cheats but you have to look at them as filters. Prime gets rid of a lot of cheaters and smurfs. Trust Factor can then sort out players which are left based on all of the factors and as I said, match them with other players with the same behavior or attitude. We currently know about 6 different kinds of bands in CSGO. Some of these bands can be shared through family sharing, so only share your library with someone who you trust. You receive VEC ban after Valve Anti-Cheat finds cheats in your memory or processes. Permanently untrusted ban isn't handed by VAC, but by the game or other systems. Well, we don't really know. It is still displayed as a VAC ban on your Steam profile. You get it after the game detects some weird and repetitive behavior like, for example, snapping out of the same bone every time or firing with zero latency which are manifestations of aimbot and triggerbot. Convicted by Overwatch, minorly disruptive ban means that you were convicted for griefing by Overwatch. The first ban is usually at least 30 days, but the second one is permanent. Convicted by Overwatch majorly disruptive ban means that you were caught cheating by Overwatch. These bans are permanent and have the same consequences as VAC bans. Manual ban is something that happens rarely and we are not 100% sure how it happens. Rumors say that they are given to cheat developers by VAC crew or Valve employees when their Steam account is linked on cheating forums. It sounds really far-fetched to me, so let's just say that there are people who were caught cheating or sharing cheats by different means. Last but not least are regular matchmaking bans or cooldowns which are given to people who AFK, team kill, abandon, disconnect, kick or are kicked from the match. These cooldowns work on offense levels. With each offense this level and also the cooldown is increased. Cooldowns start at 30 minutes, continue to 2 hours, 24 hours and then 7 days. It takes 7 days for offense level to go down by 1, so pay attention to how you behave. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions, you know what to do. See you in the future, Janky out.